Hey everybody, welcome back to Face Off again. I'm Kyle Solander here with my buddies Tom and Derek. We're going to jump right in again, guys. Let's do it. Switching from the NFL, we're talking future NFL and Johnny Football, or Johnny Manziel as he's actually named. Yep. And we're talking what his Wait, NFL... His real, na his real last name's not Football? No, I think he's having a change. Kind of an Ocho Cinco deal. Uh, like a Meta World Peace. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're talking what his potential is looking forward to the NFL. Derek, I'm going to start with you. I think he's got a lot of promise. I mean, I think if this kid, he's got all the tools to be a great quarterback. I mean, going into the NFL, people are going to say he's really flashy and everything. But look at somebody like Deion Sanders. He, he showed up to a game in a helicopter. Don't you mean Leon Sandcastle? Yeah. <laughs> now, there's so many people in the NFL that are much more flashy than somebody like Manziel. He's in college. He's going to show off. He's 20 years old. He's my age. If I was playing Johnny Manziel quality football, I'd be pretty flashy myself. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... He's got all the tools to be a great quarterback in the NFL or in college, as he's already shown. He's a good pocket quarterback. He's got good presence. He can move. He's got burning speed. And honestly, I think it just comes down to who drafts him. If he gets drafted to a crappy team, he can help the team, but they're not going to go anywhere immediately. If he gets drafted to it, even a halfway decent team, he can go into the playoffs his first year out of college. Wow. That's, that's pretty big promise coming from hey, Derek. Tom, what do you, you think? You have very high hopes for this young man. <laughs> Um, I think his age is what's going to factor into him not being so great. His immaturity? or Yes, okay. it's definitely his immaturity <laughs> because, he, yeah, he's young and he's phenomenal in college, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I think his, his belief in himself, his cockiness going into the NFL is going to be too much. I think he's going to get laid out. Like someone's going to be like, hey, dude, welcome to the NFL. This is what happens here. And uh, I think he's going to be humbled very quickly and he's going to be subpar in okay. the NFL. I think we've seen a lot of quarterbacks in college that are able to do incredible things and it just doesn't translate Tim to Tebow. the NFL. Tim Tebow, uh, Matt Barkley's a possibility, mm -hmm. Matt Leinert, as I said before we came on, and I think Johnny Manziel is going to be another one of those guys. I think his style of play is really easy to game plan for. And in college you don't see that as much as you do in the NFL, but I think once we get into the NFL, the pro level, you're going to see teams that know how to play him. So I don't think he's going to have the success that somebody like Derek does. Yeah, I don't think he's going to transition. Like somebody like me. Somebody like I don't think like he's going to transition well into the, the NFL style from the college style of game. No, well, not, not right away. Maybe in a few years in the NFL mm -hmm. he'll be good, but definitely not his rookie year. He's definitely no, not going to do well. I don't think so either. Well. But let's hop trains here. Let's go from NFL and football over to the NHL. Talk about a couple local teams, really. The Flyers, the Devils, and the Rangers. Both off to really, or all three off to really slow starts. Tom, who do you think can bounce back? Um, I definitely think the Rangers have the most potential to bounce back because, you know, they have the new coach um, who's, com who's has completely opposite-minded um, from Tortorella from last year. Tortorella was completely defensive-minded. This new coach is completely offensive-minded. They haven't really learned the transition to play defense along with being offensive-minded. Because, you know, against the Sharks, they gave up nine goals, which <laughs> just shouldn't happen regardless of how bad your defense is. That's just unbelievable. But I think they have too many offensive weapons to, to not be able to bounce back. Yeah, I agree with you. Derek, what do you think? And unfortunately, it looks like we're agreeing on this, but I'm going to have to go with the <laughs> yes. New York Rangers. It's got to be the Rangers just because looking at the two other teams, they just don't seem likely no. to be able to bounce back. The Flyers, as much as I like them, Mm -hmm. Loving the Philly teams and everything like that. Claude Giroux's going on record and said to him, said to the media that the feeling in that locker room is just abysmal. They've like, already fired their coach. Lavillette's the already gone. We talked about that last mm -hmm. time, but he's they're just not playing inspired hockey, and I don't see it changing. No. The Devils, nineteen and nineteen last year. I don't. Th it's a shortened season, but I don't think they're going to bounce back. Yeah. But behind Brian Callahan and Henrik Lundqvist, I don't think that they can stay down that long. Definitely not. No, and I agree with both of you guys. I think the Rangers are the team to do it. Like I said, the Flyers already fired their head coach. They're not coming back. I expected this start from the Devils. I don't really see much promise in them right now. So, yeah, I think the Rangers, if anybody, are going to bounce back. Agreed. I agree. But what, what, what bothers me so much at, right now between those three teams is that the Devils haven't won a game yet, but they still have more points than the, the Rangers mm -hmm. and, and the, the Flyers. But... I don't think they're going to be able to last very long, depending on getting one point here and there by getting into the overtime and losing all those overtime games. They're going to have to start winning games to bounce back, and I don't think, I don't think they're going to be able to do so. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about a specific player now, San Jose Sharks center Thomas Hurdle. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, he's 19 years old, but he looks like someone who could be a star 
in this league. He's putting up incredible numbers. So, Derek, I'm going to start with you. Can Thomas Hartle be the next star? From the first five games of the season, I think it's a little early to say, like, this is the guy. This is the new guy that we're going to have in the NHL. But it's pretty hard to argue with those mm-hmm. facts that quickly. Seven goals in five games. Yep. He's only... Dr- trailing Ovechkin and Crosby, two mm-hmm. of the best yep. names in the sport of the in past points. five, yeah, six years in points. It's only by one. And he's the center. He's 19 years old. He comes from the Czech Republic where they grow hockey players on trees. So he's coming out of there. He's 19 years old, and he's leading a Sharks team that went into the playoffs last year. They were an mm-hmm. impressive team. This isn't just an upstart Mighty Ducks-style Disney yeah. team that he's coming into. This is a team that can do things. And behind this kid, I think they can actually do something big. Okay. Tom, what do you yeah, think about Tom I, I, I agree with what you said. How it's it is it is a little early to tell, but you know his his performance is just just hard to argue. Like he's only 19. He's younger than me, so I want to say that I I hate him. <laughs> he's younger than me, and he is doing incredible things. He's embarrassing things. all of he's us. He's embarrassed. He's leading the league right now with seven goals, four of them coming in that that nine to two game against the Rangers that I mentioned earlier. But he's he's leading the league in goals. He's only behind the two of the arguably the two best players in the NHL in points. Uh, he's got a a plus minus of of eight, I think, which is mm-hmm. which is the one of the best in the league, and he's just he's just incredible. Yeah, I agree with both you guys. I don't think there's much more to say. Thomas Hurdle is really showing something in the early stages of this season. Mm. So let's go grander picture here. Which team has had the most impressive start? Who's really left an impression on you so far this season? We're gonna start with me. We're gonna start with you. Okay, I'm gonna have to go with the Colorado Avalanche. They've really impressed me so far. A 5-0 start. I mean, coming off of last year, shortened season again, so you can wait that however you want. 16-25 and 25 mm-hmm. last season. Fifth place ending. They come out, and they're 5-0 and already. They dealt the Maple Leafs their first loss, and their only loss, I believe, of the season so far. I think so. They beat the Maple Leafs. They beat a great Bruins team mm-hmm. this year. And this is coming from a team that's not good. They weren't good last year. They weren't really all that great the year before, but... I don't think you can understate the influence that Patrick Waugh had coming in as head coach. You have somebody like that. He's a legend Mm -hmm. in the sport. And I think that he might have gotten in the ear of some of his players and changed their perception. Tom, what about you? Yeah, Patrick Waugh is definitely a legend in the sport and a legend in Colorado. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of the the best player they've ever had. Mm -hmm. They haven't really been good since Patrick Waugh played. They've had a couple decent years here and there, but... I think them coming off, starting off five and zero off a, a subpar season last year, a, a decent season the year before that. They're, uh, I think they're doing great, and I hope they can keep it up. I'm pulling for them. So you're taking the yeah. Avalanche as well. Avalanche as well. I'm going with the San Jose Sharks. We just talked about Hurdle, who's hard to argue. giving a great, you know, deal of production for them, and they're off to a great start. I expected a great start from them, but I think this really solidified that idea that they could be a big name team in this league mm-hmm. now. I'm pulling for them. Me too. Yeah, me too. I, I, I've always liked the Sharks. They're, they're, they've always been There's nothing not to like about yeah. the Sharks. They it's don't really, have anybody like yeah. that. All right. We'll be right back with Face Off. We'll have our Game Ball final thoughts and our pick of the week.